All right, everybody, welcome on into the Auburn Daily Show, episode six of the Auburn Daily Show. Lance Dahl here with you, hanging out with Dylan Lark on this beautiful Monday afternoon in Auburn, Alabama. Dylan, we've got a lot of stuff to get to today. We're going to be talking about all of the different things that happened for Auburn football recruiting over the weekend, a lot of different transfer portal pickups, a couple different signees. We're going to be talking about those guys and then also we're going to be talking about Auburn football's projected depth chart. Lindsey Crosby here, writer at Auburn Daily, decided to run down the list, give everybody some ideas as to what the 2023 team would look like if the roster did not add anybody after this point. Of course, they probably will. We'll get to that later on. But Dylan, we had a phenomenal weekend for Auburn football recruiting. Q Freeze out there, Yahtzee after Yahtzee. He picked up a lot of different guys, and it started – with the signee of three-star Tyler Scott. Yeah, Tyler Scott committed during the fourth quarter of the All-American game during that blowout of a game. If you watched it, uh, you know, the East won by, I believe, of about 100. It was somewhere around there. <laughs> but uh, Tyler Scott is a three-star def defensive back, six foot one, 195 pounds. And something I love about this class, just going to go ahead and put it out there, uh, Gus Malzahn did not recruit six-foot-tall corners. And now there's only two DBs out of seven in this class that are sub six foot and it's our two highest rated ones. But it's interesting you point that out. That's been a point of I, if you remember, Dylan, back whenever we were doing on the line uh, over at ESPN 1067, something that uh, you, me and Noah and then everybody that came through there would kind of talk about. I believe one off season we were specifically we were going through a depth chart, uh, believe it or not. And we were talking about how it feels like Auburn specifically in the Gus Malzahn era, recruited positions undersized consistently, and defensive back was one of them. Now, Auburn's had some really good DBs come through, Carlton Davis, Roger McCreary, some different guys that have been sub six foot, but it's not necessarily like the best thing to do You know, if you're trying to find diamonds in the road. It's very similar to Auburn basketball, right? They have a backcourt consistently that's a little bit undersized, but they're good at different things, and Bruce Pearl likes to use them in his system. Well, for Auburn football, now we're starting to see it trend in the opposite direction. Guys like Smoke Monday have come into the program that are like six foot three. Sylvester Smith, I believe, is a little bit taller. Uh, Tyler Scott, like you mentioned, six foot one. Auburn's picking up some length in the defensive backfield, and to be honest with you, I think it's a really, really good sign of things to come. Now, does size, uh, size immediately equate to production specifically when it comes to DBs. I don't necessarily know. You could probably make the argument for different positions like O-line and things like that. But I do like to see Auburn recruiting kids that probably if they do find themselves in one-on-one -on -one matchups are going to be aided by the fact that they're a little bit taller. Yeah, it really helps with this new age of offense that is coming through the SEC. Uh, especially like if you go look at TCU tonight, uh, go Horn Frogs, by the way. Uh, Quentin yes, Johnston is six foot four. And when you put a five foot eleven guy against a guy who is six three and above, it's kind of hard for that guy to break up passes, uh, get interceptions, stop him. Uh, if we, if you're a fan of Auburn, you know the 2013 Iron Bowl, or not Iron Bowl national championship. We well, also in the Iron off. Bowl, Amari Cooper broke free on a touchdown as well. Yeah, but that wasn't due to size. That was. <laughs> That was just uh, tripping off of your own foot. <laughs> it, it happens. Maybe maybe the height messed it up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But but yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think that Auburn is definitely uh, it, putting themselves in a better position with this recruiting class as far as the defensive backs and their height goes. He's going to join guys like Kay and Lee, one of the better DBs in this recruiting class from a ranking standpoint. Sylvester Smith, like I mentioned, Terrence, Lo Terrence Love, the two safeties there. J.C. Hart, I mean, Auburn's got a lot of different guys coming in that they should be really excited about in that backfield. But the trenches, Dylan, is something that we emphasized last week as you and I had a conversation. We talked a lot about the offensive line, but Auburn got a couple of guys up front that I think they should be really excited about in the transfer portal. Maryland defensive end Messiah Nasili Kite uh, committed to the Tigers also this weekend, was a former three-star prospect. Uh, he will have one year of eligibility remaining, very experienced. He also joins Vanderbilt Edge transfer Elijah McAllister. Uh, really excited about this guy. Really needs some experience up front. Uh, there's like a trend going on with all of the transfers brought in for the defensive line and edge rushers. They all have one year of eligibility left just because Auburn needs that experience on the D-line front. Uh, Mosiah, uh, 6'2", 310 pounds. So, you know, he's a nose tackle. He'll be yes, right sir. up there with Jason Jones. And uh, I, I think, yeah, he just adds the right amount of size defensive line is going to need. 
And I mean, it's kind of hard to push a guy who's 310 pounds out of the way. And I mean, you talked about it with Elijah McAllister, be playing edge rusher, but the other D lineman we got, we'll talk about it a little in a second. But uh, both of them are about the same build, and they both had experience on this D line that really needs it. I mean, this one of the youngest groups of uh, position groups Auburn has going in the next year and la- lacks experience. And it was it was a topic of conversation, I think, throughout this season about the fact that Auburn's defensive line, not only was it thin at certain positions because of injury this year, it was also a concern moving forward. Like how, where is Auburn going to get that experience? And like you said, most of these guys, there's a trend here. They have one eligibility year of eligibility remaining. They've got a lot of experience. Now, statistically, these guys have not been the most productive. I mean, you look at uh, Nassili Kite. uh, He had 26 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss this season. Uh, The year before that, it was kind of a step down for him. 37 tackles, seven tackles for loss, and four sacks in 2021. So, obviously, he's got a little bit of production to go with it. And to be honest with you, you don't expect a lot from a nose tackle. You expect him to kind of be there, plug gaps and such. But... I think it's great to see Auburn identifying their needs and actually going out and executing and getting that depth. Now, is it high-end depth? Is it five-star depth? No, but Hugh Freeze understood that heading into this year that he was going to have to kind of build things up a little bit more than he would like to with this transfer portal class and getting somebody that's 300 pounds to kind of be another stopgap and what was a very leaky run defense last year, I think is great to kind of have him backing up Jason Jones. The second level of the defense, uh, I think you and I, Dylan, actually talked about three big positions of need. Actually, we I don't know if it was us, but somebody recently on the show talked about three big positions. Was it you and Harrison? It was me it and was, you. We did the uh, okay, it was, it was us. New Year's resolutions. I, man, I my all my days are getting mixed up, and I just I, I'm so filled with so much Auburn Daily content. I can't remember who did what, but we were talking about the importance of linebacker, arguably being outside of offensive line. The biggest position of need for Auburn, needing somebody to fill in the hole that Owen Papo is going to leave in this defense. Well, Auburn is getting an ex- an interesting transfer from LSU. Former four-star Demario Toland committed to the Tigers this weekend as well. Auburn was looking at him, if I'm not mistaken, Dylan, uh, with this past uh, with this past coaching staff, and they were not able to land Toland. He committed to LSU, but second time around, they got him. Yeah, and you talk about replacing Owen Papo. I don't think you can get any closer to an Owen Papo level linebacker than Demario Tolan. Uh, he's got basically the same build. He's 6'2, 222 pounds. He, this guy, he's Demario is uh his strength is actually pass coverage. And he does need more develop in the pass rush element of it, but I definitely see uh him coming into this defense and possibly being the starting linebacker right off the bat. Uh he just needs just a little bit more development, and I think we have the staff to do that. I want to make a note here, a direct quote from one of our articles here over over at AuburnDaily.com, just talking about the commitment of DeMario Tolan. Lindsey Crosby wrote this one, a direct quote here. Cam Riley and Wesley Steiner took up a lot of snaps this past season, but neither player graded out well per pro football focus. Riley came in 33rd on defense with a 57.2 score. If not any of you out there don't know what pro football focus is, it's a grading system essentially. Well, it's obviously the PFF does a lot more than that, but they have a grading system for college players where they can kind of look at different things that they do on field. I think most of it is subjective, if I'm not going to lie to you, but they, they are, they tend to be pretty accurate with, how they perform overall on the field and a 57 two score is, is very poor. Uh, it's, it's 33rd, like, like Lindsay mentioned on, on the defense, but rally came in 33rd on defense. Steiner was 35th with a 56.3 grade, uh, which is also not good. Owen Papo was the only linebacker to grade in the top 15 of the defense with a score of 69.6. So that just goes to show you how weak this linebacker core was last year according to PFF at least, but I mean, you go and watch the product yourself. It was not the most impressive, uh, I would think. And and it's weird. I I don't want to call anybody out. I don't want to say that, oh, it's the player's fault. It's the coach's fault. It's whatever. I think it was just a hodgepodge of just a bad situation. Owen Papo, I do not think was a bad player. Obviously he showed it despite the, what was going on around him. So, but the point being Auburn needs new bodies in that room. They need to kind of get a reset on that. Demario Tolan, obviously going to be able to help, uh, especially considering he was also a former blue chip recruit is something that you like to see in the transfer portal kind of rare to do get a blue chip recruit. Auburn's gotten a couple uh, and they picked up one more defensive lineman, Lawrence Johnson uh, from Purdue uh, just to get a little bit deeper on the front. Another 300 plus pound guy, Dylan. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to college loop as well, you know how much I love the big boys up front. 
uh, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. This guy's got an inch on uh, Mosiah. He's 6'3", 310 pounds. Uh, he transferred from Purdue, and again, he just adds more experience. I don't think he he's as uh, I don't think he's as likely to be a starter as a Mosiah would be. But I definitely think that the experience that he adds coming from a Purdue really helps his defensive line even more. Yeah, and you look at the production last year. I mean, not a whole lot doing there, but you look at the amount that he actually played up front, 451 snaps on the defensive line. Uh, around 400 of those came from the defensive end position. Interesting that Purdue's electing to go with a 310-pound pound player on their end uh, of the defensive line. Could be fun to see what Auburn tries to do there. I would like to expect that he would probably work somewhere in the interior uh, just based off of his size with the Tigers, and I agree with you. I think Lawrence, is again, Auburn needs all the depth they can get. But if we're talking about these guys and breaking down maybe where they would fall uh, here on a depth chart, which we will actually get to here in just a little bit, I, I think that he's probably going to be under somebody like the silly kite if we were had if, if we did have to speculate now. But th it's really, really good to see Auburn kind of, again, filling positions of need. Uh, but, but Dylan, there was one more player added to what is already a loaded defensive back class here, and that is three-star safety C.J. Johnson. Yep, C.J. Johnson, a 6'3 safety. Uh, I've watched a little bit of his film, and I've never seen a guy who – he's 190, 193 pounds, so he's a little undersized weight-wise. But watching him play, he was able to square up on tackles and take, got, take down guys who were bigger than him. And he does. He plays aggressively when the ball's in the air, uh, and he's. Just, I don't think he's going to be a guy you can expect to see day one like some of these other guys that are in the in this class. But I definitely think that he is going to be a future impact guy. And we talked about SMA fourteen last time we were we, we had the show, and he's definitely the kind of guy that you'd put on as like a linebacker from a safety, and get a lot of user picks. So I like yeah. what I see from him. There you go. Well, I, I I like the NCAA 14 comp. I'll give you another comp here, Dylan. Actually, I'm just look. I just had to pull up Smoke Monday's dimensions. Johnson, six foot three, 193 pounds. Smoke Monday coming out of high school was six three, 185. So uh, could we be getting a Smoke Monday replacement? I can already hear uh, the whistle blowing, the flag being thrown for targeting. Hopefully, CJ Johnson's able to clean that up a little bit if if he does show out in the defensive backfield. But yeah, another. Really, really good uh, pickup as far as length goes. Again, adding to a very, very stacked uh, defensive back group. Shout out to Zach Etheridge, man, for for continuing to work extremely hard and kind of holding things together on that uh, side of the football. Any final thoughts on these five guys, Dylan, before we move on to the depth chart? I will say, I didn't get to say my one note about Tyler Scott. Uh, I read his recruiting profile, and my favorite word to use for defensive players is the word scrappy. Yeah, and, and that's I, that's kind of that's kind of what's been kind of like the hallmark of Auburn DBs over the past few years. And yeah, I don't think Zach Etheridge gets paid near enough for what he has done with this recruiting class. And just to put it out there, one more recruit is going to be committing tomorrow at about eight PM. That we're looking at uh, Micah. I don't know how to say his last name. I've heard Mazuka. I've heard Moskua. Uh, I saw on Baylor's website uh, how to pronounce it. That's the that's the Baylor offense interior offensive lineman, right? Yes. Big and, for Auburn if they're able to get him. And uh, Tar, I was talking to Harrison Tar, and he said it'd be a great idea to have uh, a guy with the name Mazuka right next to the guy named Gunner. Hey, <laughs> you got Bazooka and Gunner right beside each other. I love that. If only Tank had stayed, it'd if, have an dude, explosive, explosive offense. Really, the, the offense would literally be called the Arsenal. It would. Uh, well. We can't say Arsenal because that's too, it's too close to anyway. Moving along, <laughs> hey, before we get to Auburn's depth chart, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Prize Picks. This season, Auburn Daily has partnered with Prize Picks to bring some fun and variety to the picks for 2023. Prize Picks is a free app that allows you to choose any two, three, four, five, or six players from any sport in your wagers. You can predict the, predict the over or under for the next game and win big prizes if they do well. They've got flex options where you can still get paid if you only get three of your five picks correct or two of three or anything like that. And you have multiple spots, sports, excuse me, in the same parlay as well. So you could do college basketball. You could do NFL. Now the playoffs are getting going. You could do some, uh, you could do some NBA as well. Uh, and best of all, you can use promo code Auburn, A-U-B-U-R-N, to receive double on your first deposit up to $100. Again, that's promo code Auburn, for double for your first deposit. I mean, with college basketball season going on, 
I'd encourage you go check out Prize Picks and use Auburn Daily and use promo code Auburn. All right. The big thing I wanted to get to here, Dylan, the depth chart for the Auburn Tigers. Lindsey Crosby, again, writer over here at AuburnDaily.com, does a phenomenal job with his baseball pieces, but he decided to write up the depth chart, what the team could potentially look, look like. He noted in his article, it is a very early depth chart projection, so nobody needs to get mad. Returning starters are in bold over at AuburnDaily.com if you want to go check it out. There are probably some positions that are going to look a little bit differently in terms of who's starting, I think, if Auburn continues to work through the transfer portal. But overall, I mean, Hugh Freeze has already done a lot uh, to kind of get this this ball rolling, and I, I'm really excited to take a look at what the team could look like now that it's revamped uh, in this first year under Freeze. Starting with the offense, obviously, Dylan, You've got quarterbacks, and right now Auburn has not picked up a transfer portal quarterback. The smoke around Spencer Sanders, I think, may be starting to die down just a little bit. Where Auburn goes next, I'm not sure. There are some rumors floating around that they could be looking at a couple of different places, but uh, there's nothing anywhere close to being confirmed right now that I would feel comfortable talking about. But right now, Dylan, Robbie Ashford, QB1, Redshirt Jr., and he, he's he's kind of being he's kind of being talked about as the second guy when Auburn gets a portal quarterback. But to be honest with you, I think under Hugh Freeze, he's got a legitimate shot to take that number one spot. Oh, for sure. I mean, my comparison to Robbie Ashford was Malik Willis, who definitely played a whole lot better once he got under a Hugh Freeze offense. But with uh, with Spencer Sanders and the Grayson McCall, all that is kind of dying down now, especially with Grayson McCall going back to Coastal. And I believe, I don't know where Spencer Sanders is going to be going now, but with Robbie Ashford, I think his development is going to take an, a steep incline in the right direction, especially under Hugh Freeze. And I, I mean, I don't think you go wrong with either one of the two guys, I, but I do think Robbie is definitely the guy. And uh, right now a transfer quarterback would just mean someone to give Robbie a little bit of push forward. I don't, I think Spencer Sanders and Grace McCall were the only two guys who you could definitely say, yeah, they're coming, but they're going to be starting. You can't really do it with Robbie. I think that this is something that we discussed on last week's episode, Dylan, as far as looking at Auburn's depth at that position. I think Auburn would genuinely be comfortable taking a quarterback just simply for depth behind Robbie because you look behind him. If he gets injured, Auburn's going to be starting somebody with some, with a lot of an experience, and that's probably going to be Holden Gariner. And I don't know if Auburn's necessarily comfortable saying that's our QB too. So maybe go out and get somebody to, like you said, compete with Robbie, push Robbie, elevate Robbie, but at the end of the day, be that number two guy. I don't know how comfortable, to be honest with you, now that I'm thinking about it, a four-year starter at a Power 5 school would be transferring to another Power 5 school just to sit behind another quarterback like Spencer Sanders. So maybe Auburn's looking in a different direction to find somebody that would be comfortable doing that. I don't know. It's definitely an awkward situation because you mostly leave the portal to go find more playing time or more opportunity, right? It, with Auburn's case, I think they've got somebody that they could feel confident in. And so it's just a weird situation, but we'll continue to monitor it. Uh, I think, again, Auburn's looking in a couple different spots right now, but nothing confirmed. Robbie Ashford, QB1, Holden Gariner, QB2. Hank Brown, the true freshman three-star, would probably be QB3. Running backs, Jarquez Hunter. Not much else to say here. He's going to be the starter. You've got a loaded uh, – you've got a loaded – a group here with Jeremiah Cobb, Damari Alston, Sean Jackson also in here as well. But I think Hunter's going to be that number one guy. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Jarquez is going to be the focal point of this rushing attack. Damari is going to come in to kind of be that passing down running back. And I think Jeremiah Cobb it might – he might get retroded. I'm not too sure. I think Sean Jackson is good enough to kind of take over whatever role that uh, Jeremiah Cobb ha- – is uh, going to have in the future because I mean Jarquez he could easily have a, a top notch year and go early to the draft but I mean I think Auburn is planning on trying to add another guy into this mix just to like I've heard uh Brian Batty from yep. USF thrown into the mix and I mean you, Auburn's running back room is loaded <laughs> That's what I was about to say is they're looking at a guy right now if I'm not mistaken from USF like you said Brian and I, he was almost like a 1200 yard rusher averaged like over six yards a carry. If I'm not mistaken, has been pretty good uh, throughout most of his tenure with the bulls. And uh, you look at his dimensions, he's like five foot eight. So you're looking at Sean Shivers, you know, round two, 
probably not as as heavy. I, I think he was listed at like 180, 170 pounds, but uh, 165 pounds. Oh, great! So he's lighter than me. Crazy, <laughs> but I I think that he could. Uh, I think that he could be an interesting pairing in that backfield with Jarquez Hunter, just to kind of give somebody to be a complimentary style back. Of course, I don't necessarily know if a 1200 yard rusher wants to do that, but any opportunity to move up to the power five level would probably be accepted. I would assume, but that's the running back room. Got a lot of depth there. Speaking of another room that has a lot of depth, the wide receiver position, you know, there's a lot of young guys in here, but there are a lot of young guys in here. Uh, if you know, if you know what I mean, Camden Brown, probably starting on the, at the X position on the outside. saw some great things from him later on in the year. Last season, Koi Moore, uh, LSU transfer, probably going to be getting the nod at the Z. And then Javaris Johnson, the leading receiver on last year's squad, going to be getting the nod at the H or the slot position, if I'm not mistaken, Dylan. Yeah, and if you look at the backup, second string for Camden Brown is Landon King. I think that's probably the best one-two depth chart on any position on this team. Because yep. I'm expecting both those guys, Camden Brown and Landon King, to be like breakout players for this offense. And I, I mean, I love Camden Brown. He's one of my favorite players that came from last year's recruiting class. And I mean, how can you not love Landon King? I had somebody consistently asking me throughout last season, like, who's your favorite player on the team? Who's your favorite player? And I had a really tough time answering that question, but I consistently came back to, I like Camden Brown. I, I think he's got a lot of potential. I think he carries himself well based on what I've seen. And I'm excited to see what he could be for this Auburn offense uh, as somebody that you could see on the al outside. It's interesting how Malcolm Johnson Jr. and Tavares Dawson haven't really gotten an opportunity to shine, but they're still here, and they're still going to be rotating in. Some other players to watch, Dequavius Sori, the true freshman, Jay Fair, Amari Kelly. I mean, again, this is a really deep room. It's just not a lot of experience to go around, but the guys are moving up, and in a Hugh Freeze offense, uh, I think you could see some of these guys get some get quite a few targets to, you're looking at a couple different players in the transfer portal right now, Dylan. Just something I wanted to point out really, really quick here. Uh, you're looking at a couple different guys, maybe uh, a player from Cincinnati, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Nick Thornton. If I'm not, I, I may be wrong on I that. I think it's uh, Mardner, I believe. Nick Mardner. Uh, he's a six foot six receiver, formerly at Hawaii, was playing under Marcus Davis uh, just a couple of years ago, Auburn's new receivers coach. But yeah. adding somebody else on the outside here, I don't think would be a bad idea. Yeah, you're looking at uh, if you type, look at Nick Mardner, yeah, six foot six, 185 pounds. He kind of has the same build as another star wide receiver in the NCAA with uh, Quentin Johnston yet again. But here's the thing: he has two inches on Quentin Johnston. There you go. He is two inches taller, and I mean, we missed out on some guys already with Jamari Thrash and Jaden Thompson. Both went to Louisville, so Jeff Brom is killing it over there at Louisville right now. But I mean. Size at the wide receiver position matters more than most other positions do, except for maybe tight end. Uh, but Camden Brown and uh, I believe uh, Landon King will kind of negate any need for some transfers because you're like, these two guys are going to pop off. I think Auburn's essentially just trying to be next year's TCU. I mean, I think a lot of signs point to Auburn setting themselves up to potentially do that. You got a dual threat quarterback. You got some young guys on the outside. You got a revamped defense, first year head coach. I mean, a lot of signs point to, hey, the Bet Online actually just recently released their championship odds for next year. TCU, 100 to 1 odds, if I'm not mistaken, correct? I believe so. Auburn's a 100 to 1 odd favorite to win the national title. I mean, do you know what? Do you know what TCU's record was last season? Oh, uh, don't tell me it was five and seven. It was five and seven. Well, there you go. Auburn's going to the natty. Ladies and gentlemen, book it. You know, to be honest with you, it all kind of makes too much sense because that's kind of what Auburn does in first year head with first year head coaches not named Brian Harson, but uh, they normally have a really good season to to start things off. So that's um that's something to monitor there. But a little too much time spent on the receiver room. Let's move on. Tight ends, Rivaldo Fairweather, transfer from FIU. Auburn's got a lot of depth here. Luke Deal, Tyler Fromm have been here for 25 years. Brandon Frazier, also somebody that's maybe had three catches that is still in this room. And then Mike Riley Ducker, uh, somebody that got a little action late last year. John Samuel Schenker, after spending 30 years of his own with the Tigers, has decided to finally uh, to finally move on. I believe it was six years. I'm, I'm just playing. But Rivaldo was a machine in FIU's offense as a tight end. And I wouldn't, I, it's so hard to project what some of these new guys are going to do from a production standpoint, like statistically. 
like if he's going to be able to get the catches and the yards. But I mean, he he should be. I don't want to say a focal point, but somebody Auburn can rely on. Uh, there are two guys in the NFL who uh, I believe both are in the playoffs right now uh, who were tight ends under Hugh Freeze-led offense, and that is Evan Ingram and Dawson Knox. And I believe Rivaldo Fairweather. Uh, my one note for tight end position is Rivaldo Fairweather superiority. <laughs> I believe he is going to also be a breakout player. And you brought up John Samuel Schenker. I don't know how much uh, – he was a great pass catcher, and he was also a – decent baseball player as well can't forget him on the baseball side of things yes, sir. but i think michael riley ducker is someone that we can i i would like to see a little bit more out of uh in this offense especially because when you flip a guy from iowa at the tight end position you expect he, big he, things he's probably good so and, and especially I, with a uh, my brenda frazier six foot seven so uh, of course he also probably saw what was going on on the offensive side of the ball and decided you know what brian harson over what's going on with the Hawkeyes offense, which is an interesting decision. But yeah, I agree with you. Anytime you steal a guy from somebody like Iowa uh, at that position, you expect some some production. Offensive line is probably the biggest point of interest here. So you've got a couple different transfer portals in Gunnar Britton and Dylan Wade. You expect those to be your left and right tackles, if I'm not mistaken. Jeremiah Wright would probably be starting at left guard. We're going to be monitoring the situation with Micah uh, Mazuka, uh, the transfer from Baylor. Again, he's going to be committing tomorrow. Like Dylan said, if he does commit, I would expect him to slot in at left guard. I believe that's where he played primarily for the Baylor Bears. Your center, Connor Liu, is going to be a true freshman. That's going to be fun after seeing what happened with the freshman, or excuse me, the center position this year. Uh, and again, hearkening back to what we talked about last week, uh, something that Dylan pointed out, that I don't think a lot of people are talking enough about and just how much that affected Auburn's offensive line last year. You're going to be going into a really rough spot again with that. I wouldn't say rough. I'm just, it's inexperienced is what I should say. Um, and then you've got uh, a Xavier Miller at right guard as well. So essentially a revamped offensive line with a couple different backups that we've seen before. Yeah. It'd be really interesting to see if Micah Mazuka does commit because you're going to have a full offensive line full of guys who were not on the team last season. And I think Connor Liu is probably going to be a big focal point of this offense with with his ability. If you watch the All-American game, Connor Liu was making a bunch of five stars look like middle schoolers out there. He was throwing people around, and Connor Liu is my favorite recruit from this entire class. Uh, but, I mean, this is just an awesome, awesome offensive line compared to the last season. It's going to be different, and I think – just to talk about going back with Robbie, if he's able to take over this QB one spot, giving him an actual offensive line is going to do wonders for him. I think I'm really excited to see what that looks like. Also another note here. Uh, I think I'm looking at the, the two deep here. I think six of our 12 or yeah, six of six of our projected uh, players on the two deep are red shirt or, or freshmen or red shirt freshmen. So Good luck with that as far as experience goes. But, hey, like we said about the linebacker spot, it needed to kind of be blown up. It needed to kind of be revamped. And I think Auburn's gone out and they've done a lot of great things and they're still looking to do a little bit more with that offensive line position. Is there anything else we want to note before we move on to here, Dylan? Uh, I think we're ready to go to the defense. The offense looks like it's going to be a top two offense in the uh, in college football next year. So we just go straight to defense. <laughs> yeah, just go straight. We, we, we've got the TCU vibes going on. So obviously we're going to pop off and Robbie Ashford's going to be a Heisman candidate. Sources say he's not focused in having fun, but we'll see what happens as the, as the summer rolls along. Defense, uh, four two five. We talked about it last week. Ron Roberts is going to bring it in his uh, his four two five scheme. Very similar to what Kevin Steele used to run quite a bit with the Tigers. Starters on the D-line, Jason Jones, Marcus Harris, uh, Messiah Nasili Kite, we have currently projected as a starter in this uh, in this base set. Uh, Dylan, tell me a little bit more about this rotation. Uh, there's a lot of weight in that rotation. Uh, that's going to be a defensive line that's going to be a force to be reckoned with, and you're not going to have a fun time trying to rush against this defensive line, especially with the fact that I think Jason Jones is around six foot four. He's a big boy, and he's a, all three of those guys are. I know, except for Marcus Harris, he's up there, but Jason Jones and Messiah are definitely over 300 pounds. <laughs> yep. You've got a lot of experience there up front, and then you've got some uh, some more uh, depth and weight, like you said. 
Uh, you've got Twinton, uh, Quintrail, uh, Jameson Travis, who is also a transfer coming in. Jeffrey Emba's still here. Uh, Tavechi Okoli still here. On C Sledge is still here. Uh, Stephen Johnson is a true freshman on D-line. Uh, you've got several different guys, including Keldrick Falk, who's probably going to be starting uh, for the Tigers, I think, or at least heavily in the rotation at, at defensive end, just based on his talent alone. You've got several different players in this rotation that could find their way up to, I, I don't want to say starting roles, but I think as far as snaps go, I think Auburn could probably rotate here heavy if they want it. It's very similar to last year and the fact that Auburn's like, oh, we got so many different players, we could probably rotate them out and balance them. But I, I truly do believe outside of Jones and Harris, you've got a lot of different newcomers that we'll probably see early on in the season kind of mix and match. Uh, maybe Auburn figures it out and they rock with with just like a shortened list and they have de have that depth still, but... I don't know. I, I just think that there are so many different names on here that I could get excited about that I can only speculate Auburn is going to just simply try things out and give them those snaps. So, A lot of future household names in this list. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think that you're probably going to see some of these guys pop off. And again, I, I just think a lot of opportunities are going to be given out uh, with, with Ron Roberts in this defensive line as they head into year one. Edge rushers, you've got Elijah McAllister. And uh, and to be honest with you, I think Keldrick Falk probably gets in a little bit here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, it, I, I forget whether or not Falk is, is comfortable playing edge or if he was he was a defensive lineman coming out of high school. But you've got McAllister, Brooke, Dylan Brooks is still here. Brenton Williams uh, is also going to be here. Uh, you, you, you don't have a lot of depth here. But again, I think that's why you're going to see so many different guys getting opportunities. Yeah, and uh, Dylan Brooks, if you uh, remember from last season, he flipped. He was a was he a five star or a four star? That he was flipped, a high four star, if I'm not mistaken. He, we flipped him from Tennessee, and Dylan Brooks is a monster of a human being, and uh, you can probably already guess that because he has a great first name. I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a Dylan. You can't go basketball. wrong. No, but sir. yeah, I, I, I expect Elijah McAllister and Dylan Brooks to be a great, nice one-two punch. And you brought up Keldrick Falk a little bit. Uh, he is 270 pounds, so I do believe that he is going to be more of a defensive end look. Yeah, defensive and not, not necessarily an edge. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, regardless, though, I think Auburn could probably – what do you think? Could Auburn probably stand to get one more guy here? I'd like uh, to think. I think the difference between Elijah McAllister and Dylan Brooks, and then there's a giant gap. I don't want to say the not giant gap, but Brent Williams has you. You want some guys with a little bit more experience. I think you can get maybe one more guy to kind of have behind Dylan Brooks. Yeah, and I mean edge rushers are just, I mean they're a necessity in today's defensive world. Linebackers, uh, uh, it's interesting. Lindsey has Demario Tolan. And then Robert Woodyard starting at linebacker. And then he's got Cam Riley and Wesley Steiner, the seniors, backing him up. Eugene Asante uh, does, in fact, exist. He is still here. Desmond Tisdale, Cam Brown, Jake Levant, Powell Gordon, all those guys from the rotation last season, they're still here. Uh, Auburn needs a little bit of help here at this position, Dylan. Yeah, and you're looking at the – when you look at the starters and the backups, you can see that the two of the youngest guys in this entire linebacker room are the two starters on this list. And one of them you you took from a transfer portal out of LSU, and the other one you flipped from Alabama. So I pretty, you know, these two are good. I mean, when you get when you get a guy from two SEC West foes like LSU and Alabama, you pretty much know that these are the top notch linebackers that these two schools really wanted. I mean, LSU was not happy whenever Demario Tolan went to Auburn, anyways. So I think these two form a nice punch as well. One two, I'm going to keep saying a one two punch. Because at four two five, these two guys are going to be fast, strong linebackers who are going to make life really tough for quarterbacks. Curious to see what that what that uh, that starting pair looks like there uh, for the linebacker position. If Auburn tinkers with it, because uh, again, a lot of struggles with that group last year, uh, especially with Owen Papo still suffering uh, from injury. The uh, final position before we move on to special teams here, Dylan, defensive backs. Essentially, all the starters are back. Nehemiah Pritchett, DJ James, two corners on the outside. They're going to be returning. Jalen Simpson, Zion Puckett, Donovan Kaufman. I mean, all these guys are coming back. A question here for you, Dylan, as you start to break this down. Was DJ James the best player on Auburn's defense last season? I do believe so. Uh, he kind of adds to that how balanced that trade was for Bo Nix and uh, Robbie Ashford and DJ James. Uh, I think he is going to be the top corner in this class, and I – think or in this in this on this team 
And I think he could be like a Carlton Davis type player who has a great season, goes to the draft, becomes a great corner in the NFL as well. He seems like that Carlton Davis-esque defensive back. Very wise of Auburn to identify the fact that they've got a lot of experienced older guys that are going to be graduating this year uh, com- com- going out. It's really, really wise of them to not only build on the depth that they already have uh, with with just a couple of different these Juco transfers like Keontae Scott, but also coming in and bringing in a loaded uh, freshman class like we've been talking about. So Auburn should be good at that spot for years to come. Really, really glad, glad uh, Wesley Wesley. Uh, and I can't speak. Wesley McGriff uh, is back on staff recruiting alongside uh, uh, Zach. One more point. I can do one more point about this. Uh, if you look at some of these guys in the backups with Austin Osbury, J.D. Rhyme, Kyan Lee, these are some kids that would be starting on other teams, and there are backups. That, that's going to put you put it out there how good the secondary room is. I'm sure there are quite a few SEC teams and then a lot of Power 5 teams that would be very pleased to see some of these guys in their defensive backfield. Probably not going to be too happy to be seeing them uh, on Auburn's side whenever they do play them. Specialist, final thing here, Oscar Chapman, the Aussie, is back for one more year with the Tigers. And Alex McPherson, brother of Evan McPherson, is going to get the nod as the kicker for the Tigers. Looked good in his limited action that he got last year. Marshall Myers is probably going to be the backup punter. Evan McGuire, if I'm not mistaken, from Opelika, uh, if I, I may be wrong there, but he's going to be the backup kicker uh, for the Tigers. I think Auburn should be in good hands here uh, with the specialist. McPherson should be a beast. Yeah, if you uh, didn't watch our 2021 Iron Bowl, uh, Oscar Chapman was definitely the Auburn MVP of that game. Uh, he's a great punter. Expect him on the Ray Guy watch list right at the start of the season. Alex McPherson, uh, he hopefully with this – specialist group Auburn should expect to see a little bit more consistency than what we have been seeing as of late I think Alex McPherson has that same talent level I don't want to say of a Daniel Carlson but definitely of like a Cody Parkey level kicker and he's got the same stature he has probably a stronger leg than Parkey does so I'm expecting a huge season out of the redshirt freshman I like that comp. I like that comp to Parkey, and I agree. I think he's he's going to bring consistency to a special teams unit, a, a field goal kicking unit that has not necessarily had that for a couple of years now. It, it's been a it's been a little bit of a struggle uh, now that Auburn has moved on from the Carlson brothers, even though they have man they have made their and printed their names in the Auburn legend books. So uh, shout out to them. But McPherson, I think, is going to be able to do a lot of great things for this. Uh, Auburn Tigers team a lot of high expectations Dylan I think already as Auburn starts to build things up and as we go through this Auburn depth chart again we didn't hit every single thing in the article so you can go check it out on auburndaily.com Lindsey Crosby wrote it if you want to go read through this again you can give your thoughts on the depth chart in the comments below let us know what you thought Dylan any final closing thoughts before we head out here War Eagle there you go I was literally I was literally about to say I don't really think there's anything else to say other than just War Eagle uh, Broncos country, let's ride. TCU Horn Frogs, uh, let, let's go Horn Frogs tonight for the national championship game against Georgia. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Auburn Daily Show. Zach and Lindsay on tomorrow. You can follow Dylan and I on Twitter at your boy the tank at Lance Dahl underscore. You can also check us out over on Twitter at the Auburn Daily, and then you can check out all of our written work over at auburndaily.com. Make sure you tune in tomorrow's episode of the Auburn Daily Show. Hope you guys all have a good one.